Good wonderful people, welcome to my channel. Let's discuss the talents and abilities and career options for Puna Rasu Nakshatra now in the D10 chart. Right? So we take the D10 chart, we see the ascendant, different types of 12 ascendants, and we go through each one of the nakshatra abilities and talents that Puna Rasu Nakshatra has. Right? This is the seventh nakshatra. And this falls more in the padas of Gemini. The first three padas, as you can see, there is in Gemini, and the last one is in Cancer in the Navamsha. D10 is slightly different, but we'll stick to the Navamsha. For the means and purposes of this discussion, we will stick to those kind of attributes. So we'll consider Punarvasu more as a Gemini, although in the charts it will be showing up in Cancer as well. Right? <clears throat> so let's get into it. What are the talents and abilities of Punarvasu Nakshatra? Number one, teaching and education, because this is a Nakshatra which is ruled by Jupiter and it falls within Gemini ruled by Mercury. So this is naturally a teacher, naturally education, right? May excel in careers related to teaching and education. They may thrive as teachers, professors, trainers, or in roles that involve imparting knowledge and guiding others. How beautiful is that? And if you want to look at teachers and teaching and education field, generally speaking also, you have to look at the planets Jupiter, Mercury and Rahu as shown over there, right? <coughs> Jupiter, Mercury and Rahu. And we'll see how this plays out. Next profession would be counseling and therapy. They may have a natural inclination towards counseling and therapy. They may excel as counselors, therapists, life coaches, probably even business coaches. I would think Punarvasu is very business like. You got to keep Punarvasu themes in mind, which is failing the first time and succeeding the second time. They may excel as counselors, therapists, life coaches, or in roles that involve helping others navigate their emotional well being. In case of Punarvasu, how would this play out? It plays out more like they have learned their life lesson through lots of failures. Punarvasu learns through lots of failures. They fail the first time, succeed the second time. And they start something and they fail the first time, again they succeed the second time. This makes for a person of a capability who has learned with a lot of troubles, a lot of challenges in life. And they make excellent life coaches, they make excellent business coaches as well. So that's number two. Number three, they are good at writing and communication as well. Think of Jupiter and Mercury everywhere, like I have shown there as well. Like even the colors show Jupiter and Mercury, right? Yellow and green. Writing and communication may have a talent for writing and expressing themselves effectively. They may thrive as writers, journalists, bloggers, editors, or in roles that involve creative or informative writing. They also may have a talent for research and anal analysis. They may excel as scientists, researchers, data analysts in roles that require investigative skills and problem solving abilities. We have seen this in other ones also. So we are slightly, as we go through the different nakshatras, we see the professional color change in the nakshatras. This is, we are still in the seventh, right? We have to go 20 more and you'll see this in general. <clears throat> Next one on the line is social work and humanitarian causes versus Jupiter. They may thrive in careers related to social work and non-profit organizations and humanitarian causes. How wonderful is that? They may excel as social workers, activists, community organizers or in roles that involve making a positive impact on the society. A sister who's Punarvasu and she's actively in four or five NGOs as a director. Also, they may excel in marketing and sales careers. They may thrive as marketing executives and sales representatives, brand managers, or in roles that involve promoting products and services. That's also good, isn't it? So for counseling therapy, you would have to look at planets Jupiter, Moon and Rahu. I would put it at that. Why? Counseling is of course Jupiter. Jupiter plus Moon. You need some kind of an emotional connect when you counsel others. 
Rahu is the one who drives what kind of counseling you want to do because this is a modern world. Rahu is very modern kind of point. Okay. It is all about foreign. It is all about progressive thinking, liberalistic thinking. Rahu is about that. So in the context of modern life, Rahu becomes very important play in charts in general, Navamsha, Dashamsha, all of them. Again, in writing and communication, you got to see the planets Venus, Mars, Mercury and Rahu. And of course, which aspects they play. Rahu has fourth and ninth as fifth and ninth aspects as well. So you got to see that as well. Mars has fourth and eighth aspects. So you got to see that as well. For research and analysis, I would put planet Jupiter, Mercury and Ketu. Ketu, why? Because Ketu has a tendency to go inward. Rahu has a tendency to go outward. Research and analysis is more of a very introverted thought process, right? This is why it is important that they have Ketu somewhere aspecting these two, aspecting hopefully Mercury, not Jupiter. <clears throat> Social work and humanitarian causes, I would put it at Jupiter, Venus and Moon. Why Venus here? Jupiter and Moon we can understand. There is the wisdom and there is the emotional connect. Venus is related to social causes, society causes. This is why Saturn is a yoga karaka for all the Venus rising signs like Taurus and Libra. So Venus becomes all about other people. Venus is also for beauty. Beauty is what? For conveying beauty to other people. You don't convey beauty for yourself. You convey it for others. Think about that for a minute. Marketing and sales is Rahu, is Mar Mercury, Mars and Rahu. Okay? Because marketing and sales has to have the cunningness of Rahu. You need to be able to convince people. You need to be having the drive of Mars. You need to be having the intelligence of Mercury. So this is the general thing. Now let's get it into Ascendant Pies. So if you take the Aries Ascendant, Punar Vasu appears in the third house. Also in the fourth house, but we are not considering the last mala. We are just considering Punar Vasu as Gemini for the purposes of this discussion. Yeah. So if you put it in the third house, it's a skill of competition, drive and your skill sets. What requires competition here? I would think more of marketing and sales. Third house, if it's good with Punarvasu Nakshatra and having the planets of Mars, Mars does very well in the third house, combined with Mercury, yes, does very well. And if Rahu is impacting, right? Rahu is impacting, let's say, from the ninth, not ninth, sorry, Rahu's fifth and ninth aspect, right? If from wherever it's impacting, this Rahu was stationed in 11th, for example. So if it is impacting this into the 7th or the 11th house, I would think more of the 7th house. If Rahu is sitting in 7th house, it is obsessed about other people and it is impacting this Mercury and Mars combination. These people make excellent marketing people, trust me. So that's for Aries Ascendant. For the Taurus Ascendant, Punarvasu falls in the 2nd house which is a value system, how you work, what is a value system at work, how you speak to colleagues, your speech and your earned wealth as well. Speaking predominantly figures because we are talking about Punar Rasu, which is all about Mercury and Jupiter. Of course, in the first one, we missed the Ascendant, right? You got to see the Ascendant, where Nakshatra, which one is it? And how it combines with Punar Rasu. Okay. So we are talking about how you speak. Again, it may have to do with writing and communication. It may have to do with all of the first three, teaching, education, counseling, therapy, writing, communication, all of these require communication skills. Second is also all about skills. But if it's in Kritika Nakshatra, it becomes very critical in approach, right? So they may have more talent of writers, journalists, bloggers, writing skills. If it is a Rohini Nakshatra, it may be all about business communication, life coaches. Where did that go? There was somewhere. Right. Let us just see. Yeah, counseling and therapy. But this is business coaching because Rohini is very business like. So they may get into business coaching, life coaching, executive coaching. If the ascendant is in Rohini Nakshatra, if it's in Rikshirsha Nakshatra, which is hunting for things all the time, that may become more of a social work and humanitarian causes. 
So if Jupiter, Venus and Moon are sitting somewhere in this Punar Vasu and Ascendant is in Rakshisha, when you take Gemini itself as the Ascendant, Punar Vasu appears in the Ascendant, right? So all of these careers can be suited for them. They will bring all of these attributes or abilities into whatever work they pursue. And these planets will become dominant in the determination of their career. You should pay attention to any one of these planets, how they aspect one another and how they carry forward to one another. Yeah, when Punavasu comes in the Ascendant. Ascendant is the most simple. Then you got to look at all the D10 houses, the Lord of the D10. The Lord of the 10th house in D10, which is in this case is Jupiter. The Lord of the first house, which is Mercury. So you got to see both Jupiter and Mercury. And Punar Vasu will play out very strongly in that. My guess is they would play out more in terms of counseling and therapy and teaching abilities for Gemini Ascendant because Gemini is very good at teaching. Also, in terms of teachers, professors, trainers, coaching, again, right? Because you got to see where Mercury is placed, of course. Right? I didn't get that. Could you try again? This is serious. Now, for the Cancer Ascendant, Punar Vasu appears as Gemini, also in the Ascendant, but it's the last Pada, we are considering only Gemini, so it appears in the 12th house, house of foreign lands, house of working abroad, house of retirement, house of working behind the scenes, more or less. Who works behind the scenes? Research and analysis, right? You may work as good research and analysis people. Jupiter, Mercury and Ketu, you've got to see where they are placed. Also, which one of these ascendants is playing out? If it is more like Ashlesha Nakshatra, right? They may have a lot of tendency for research and analysis. Ashlesha loves to dig into secretive stuff. They may excel as scientists, researchers, data analysts, IT people, right? Working in the background. If it is Pushya Nakshatra, they may, Pushya Nakshatra is all about teaching, so they may love to teach in foreign lands, right? Because the 12th house is foreign lands. You see what I'm saying? So that's the way you got to analyze these things. So when we come to the Leo Ascendant, um, Punar Vasu appears in Gemini in the 11th house, which is for social network and community engagement. Well, teaching and education, if you talk of university professors, teachers, they are all in community work anyway, right? In a different kind. Mostly like professors and teachers. If you take counseling and therapy, business and coaches, not so much. It's more on a one-to-one -one level. If you take writing and communication, yes. Like journalism, yes. Like podcasters, yes. One who make podcasts, right? They are all about other people. They are actively engaging with community, taking interviews, reading news anchors, for example. They are also Punar Vasu. Okay? But it depends upon where the ascendant is. Now, in this case, the ascendant may be Magha, Purva Falguni and Uttra Falguni. Purva Falguni and Uttra Falguni both are very sort of Venus-driven type of nakshatra. So, they may be more about, you know, um, taking into writing and communication and journalism type, popularity in journalism, right? In TV and media, that kind of thing they might be popular at. They may also work for social work or humanitarian causes. 11th house is about humanitarian causes, working for the masses. So those kind of careers like social workers, activists, community organizers, working for non-governmental organizations like that, right? They might be good at all of that. But in case of Magha Nakshatra, they might be more about counseling and therapy. Magha Nakshatra is also about ancestry, not just about popularity as leaders. They might be leading, but they might be counselors or therapists also. Also in terms of teaching and education. Right? This. So when we come to the Virgo Ascendant, we have got three Ascendant possibilities. Uttra Falguni, Hasta and Chitra Nakshatra where Punar Vasu falls in the 10th house, right? becomes a dominant theme, right? Mercury rules the first house and Mercury rules the 10th house. So Virgo is very strongly earthly mercurial element, right? But we got to see the Ascendant Nakshatra as well as the 10th house. Now we are talking about 10th house Punar Vasu. That's the area of focus for this video. 
So in terms of this, what will happen? If it's in Uttra Falguni or Chitra also, I would think both. Right? Uttra Falguni transcends from Leo. So if you take Uttra Falguni and Chitra, these are very creative nakshatra. So it might be actors, singers. This might be in terms of talk show hosts, you know, like Larry King. Popular talk show hosts. They can be very good talk show hosts. Chitra nakshatra. And... If you talk about writing and communication like Mercury, Venus, Mars and Rahu impacting in the 10th house, especially if his Mercury is stuck in the 10th house in Punarvasu for a Virgo Ascendant because Ascendant and 10th house Lord are in 10th house. Do you see how this amplifies? Types of relationships, they might have recognition for work. Okay, that's all the aspects of the work. If it's in Hasta, they might be good in writing because Hasta is about hand. They might be good journalists in terms of writing, in terms of blogging, in terms of writing articles, novels, writers for novels, you know. Again, you've got to look at all those combinations, Mercury, Venus, Mars and Rahu in Punarvasu. An aspect of Rahu thereof. If Rahu impacted, they might become very like sci-fi writers also. Not so much for Virgo. Virgo is very practical. I said it is Virgo here, right? So not so much in terms of sci-fi, but they might be very journalistic type of writing. Writing articles for New York Times, Washington Post, you know, on you name it. All the normal periodicals, that kind of writing. When we come to the Libra Ascendant, Panarvasu in Gemini appears in 11th, 9th house, which is all about higher studies, higher work, gurus, right? Working abroad, mentors at work. So these people, obviously, if Punarvasu is here and if Ascendant is in Swati Nakshatra, they might become excellent life coaches, excellent business coaches, executive coaches, because Swati is the most individualistic sign Nakshatra in the Libra. Okay. What do you require for coaching another person? You require to stand your ground. You require to be individualistic. You require to hold your position in order to be able to guide another executive or another employee or another business person. You are holding your position. You are not deviating according to their whims and fancies. Swati so there. Whereas if it is Chitra, then it can be more creative, creative writing and journalism. So you've got to look at those planets in Punarvasu in the ninth house for a Libra Ascendant in return. Let's keep the focus here. If it is Vishakha, it is more of talents and abilities in relating to teaching and education. Vishakha can be good teachers, professors, right? Mainstream teaching in universities, colleges, that kind of a thing. So that's for Libra Ascendant, depending upon where the Ascendant Nakshatra is. So for a Scorpio Ascendant, we have three Ascendant Nakshatras, right? Vishakha, Jeshta and Anuradha. And now we have Punarvasu in the 8th house of secrecy, secrets. Journalism, yes, but more of research and analysis. Scorpio is excellent at it. Where is research and analysis? They may have talent for research and analysis, may excel as scientists, researchers, data analysts, investigative skills, 8th house. Mercury, especially in the 8th house, is excellent investigator. When it comes to Anuradha Nakshatra, however, it's a Devgana. It's all about connection, emotional connection. So they might be better at counseling and therapy. Ascendant in Anuradha Nakshatra and all the planets of counseling and therapy, where are we here? Jupiter, Moon and Rahu impacting Punarvasu and planets here centered in Punarvasu in the eighth for Scorpio makes them excellent counselors, excellent psychologists, psychiatrists. Because Scorpio naturally is drawn towards hidden secrets. Also in Jeshta Nakshatra, but Jeshta is more about leadership. So Jeshta would be, I think, more about business coach. Because you need to uncover the hidden garbage of your client, right? In Vishakha Nakshatra, it will be more about counseling and therapy as well. They are also gone through a lot of difficulties to come out the other side. So they may make excellent counselors and therapists. So in case of Sagittarius Ascendants, what are the nakshatras we see in Ascendant? Uttra Ashada, Mula and Purva Ashada. Uttra Ashada and Purva Ashada are all about victories, make, getting victories. Purva Ashada wants victory, Uttra Ashada wants to maintain victory. Mula on the other hand wants to go and dig deep and find out, uncover the lies. So research and analysis would be more I would think, right? 
also seven house is the house of business and business partnerships what kind of profession here requires partnerships social work and humanitarian causes Nuna Nakshatra would be good at social work and humanitarian causes. It's all about other people. It's not so much after victory. Mula is a very big deep to reveal the lies, you know, uncover the truth. So they will go and pick out stuff. If it is in Punarvasu here, they will make very good social workers, humanitarian causes, activists. Right, community organizers, roles that involve making positive impact. Mula Nakshatra is obsessed with creating change, okay, positive change in the society. Whereas if it's in Uttara Ashada or Purva Ashada, more or less similar themes in Sagittarius, they may all be about teaching, teaching others, seventh houses of others. They may relate to teaching others. Counseling and therapy could be not so much, I wouldn't think so much. Writing and communication, okay sort of again i would lean on social work humanity in causes and marketing and sales that kind of a job because sales is marketing and sales also about other people seventh house so mercury mars and rahu that kind of a job these people might be good at when we speak of capricorn as an entry day 10 and more planets and points in punar vasu in gemini in the sixth house sixth house is the house of daily routines it's pouring rain outside beautiful so six thousand maybe has of daily routines, right? When you talk of as nakshatras of Capricorn, Uttara, Shada, Shravana, and Dhanishta, and if you take Shravana, especially a Devgana, right? It may be all about counseling and therapy or teaching and education. Shravana loves to teach. Shravana is the guru. It loves to teach. So it may be professors, teachers in mainstream. It may be counseling and therapy as coaches, life coaches, and so on. That's also good. They may do it as a theme, daily work. If it's in Dhanishta or Uttra Ashada, not so much Uttra Ashada and Dhanishta. Dhanishta is all about music and expressive, creative writing. There you go. Writing and communications that involve creative and informational writing, bloggers, editors. So you're looking at all of these planets in Punarvasu, in the sixth house, and ascendant in Dhanishta or Uttra Ashada. Okay? When we come to Aquarius Ascendant, it has got three nakshatras, Dhanishta, Shatvisha and Purva Bhadrapada. So in D10, this will be determining towards your career. Of course, you want to see that ang angles and deities which I spoke, spoke of in the introduction of how to use this. So Dhanishta, Shatvisha and Purva Bhadrapada. Okay. So Shatvisha will do, want to do very unconventional stuff. Social work and humanitarian causes, Shatvisha will be good for that. Okay. Because they can feel the organizations, they can feel the masses. Aquarius at its best is Shatabisha, ruled by Varuna. It is the best. So is Pura Bhadrapada. Okay, that's also good. Whereas Dhanishta will go into more of counseling and therapy. So depending upon where the ascendant moves, what are we coming to finally as a principle here? Depending upon where the ascendant moves in the D10 ascendant, which nakshatra, you got to see the check those particular planets and points. By now you must have got this, yes? That's how we evaluate this. Lastly, if you take Pisces, it comes in the fourth house, Punarvasu, and we in the ascendant Pisces, we have Uttra Bhadrapada, Revati, and Purva Bhadrapada, last Pada. Okay, so let's just consider Uttra Bhadrapada and Revati for instance. If we take Revati, Revati is all about prosperity. Revati is all about making things work. Right? Prosperous Nakshatra. So it will be more like business coaches. Revati ascendant and uh, planets and points in Punarvasu in the fourth house will make them excellent coaches. Again, we, we need a lot of business coaches, life coaches these days, especially after this pandemic business. Uttra Bhadrapada. Uttra Bhadrapada is more of an emotional connect. It's more of an emotional nakshatra. So it will be more of counseling and therapy. This is how we can shift between coaching and counseling and into business coaches and life coaches. There's a difference between business coach, life coach kind of talent required and counseling and psychologist kind of talent required. Essentially, Punarvasu plays very well in these kind of communication skills, marketing skills. 
teaching people, connecting with people, social causes. It's a beautiful nakshatra. It's Lord Rama's nakshatra, right? So it brings in this Dev Gana quality. So you've got to evaluate the nakshatra which is which we are evaluating also. It is one of us who is Dev Gana, right? So if you want to do all these benevolent things for the world. Next, we shall consider the next nakshatra after Punarvasu. Ashlesha, I would think. Right? Okay. Until then, take care, be safe. Have a good day.